Welcome to this presentation about the physiological adaptations in response to training. In relation to your syllabus, this content falls under the focus question, how does training affect performance? As you can see, physiological adaptations in response to training include resting heart rate, stroke volume and cardiac output, oxygen uptake and lung capacity, hemoglobin level, muscle hypertrophy, and effect on fast and slow twitch muscle fibres. After learning this content, you're expected to examine the relationship between the principles of training, which you learned in the previous video, and the physiological adaptations, and also relate that to improved performance. It's important for us to understand what is an adaptation. As an athlete applies loads and stress during exercise, the body adapts and functions more efficiently in response. When we think about physiological adaptations, it's important for us to think about comparing untrained individuals with trained athletes. There are eight physiological adaptations that you need to be aware of. The first is resting heart rate, which can be defined as the amount of beats that the heart makes per minute at rest. The second is stroke volume, which can be defined as the amount of blood ejected from the left ventricle with each beat. The third is cardiac output, which is the amount of blood ejected from the heart per minute. The fourth is haemoglobin levels. Haemoglobin is found in red blood cells. It binds to oxygen and transports its oxygen to the muscles. The fifth is oxygen uptake, also known as VO2 max, and it can be defined as the amount of oxygen that can be utilised by working muscles. The sixth is lung capacity, which can be defined quite simply as the capacity of air in the lungs. The seventh is muscle hypertrophy, which refers to muscle growth, which is the opposite of atrophy, which means muscles becoming smaller. And the eighth is the effect on fast and slow twitch muscle fibres. Fast twitch muscle fibres contract powerfully and they are ideal for sprinting and powerful activities. And slow twitch muscle fibres contract slowly, they use oxygen very well and they are ideal for endurance. Resting heart rate. Resting heart rate can be closely related with stroke volume and cardiac output. We think of trained athletes, we need to understand that their cardiovascular system is working very efficiently. So therefore, their heart is stronger and can push more blood out of the left ventricle with each beat. This means that less beats are required per minute to move the same amount of blood around the body as an untrained individual. So fit athletes will generally have a lower resting heart rate. And this is due to strengthening of the ventricular muscles, complete filling of the ventricles, and a more efficient cardiovascular system. So this direct relationship with cardiac output and stroke volume leads to increased oxygen and blood delivered to working muscles. And this prolongs peak performance during endurance such as activities such as marathon and triathlon. The impact of training on heart rate can easily be seen in this graph, where you can see at rest, the trained athlete has a lower resting heart rate, and even when training at maximal level, the trained athlete's heart rate is lower. So this is all just due to the far more efficient cardiovascular system due to training, strengthening of the heart muscle. It's interesting to note as well that trained athletes recover a lot faster than untrained athletes. So a trained athlete will be training really hard and they'll return to resting faster, much faster than an untrained athlete. Stroke volume and cardiac output are closely related. Stroke volume increases as a result of training due to a more complete filling of the left ventricle during diastole. It's a result of more forceful contraction and more complete emptying of the ventricle. So all of the blood that is able to fill up inside that ventricle is able to be squeezed out very efficiently or pushed out to the body tissues to be used. With regard to cardiac output, cardiac output is fairly similar between trained and untrained athletes at rest, but when training it, 
maximal levels, the cardiac output of a trained athlete is much higher. And this just allows more blood to be delivered to working muscles. Again, prolonging peak performance during endurance and other activities. When thinking about stroke volume, it's important to understand that during diastole, the, heart, the ventricles of the heart fill with blood. A trained athlete's ventricles are stronger and are able to be more flexible and fill up with more blood. This allows, then allows more blood to be forced out of the ventricle. And because of the thicker, stronger heart muscle or myocardium, more blood is able to be forced out of the ventricle and towards the body tissues, which leads to a greater amount of oxygen-rich blood delivered to muscles, and this improves performance. The impact of training on stroke volume is quite easy to see in this graph as well. The trained athlete has a higher stroke rest and also has a higher stroke volume when training at maximal level. In terms of cardiac output, it's important to note that cardiac output is fairly similar at rest between a trained and untrained athlete. However, when training at maximal level, cardiac output is significantly higher for a trained athlete. Hemoglobin levels. Hemoglobin is found in red blood cells and binds to oxygen, so it therefore transports oxygen to muscles. Hemoglobin levels increase with training. So a trained athlete will have more hemoglobin in their blood than an untrained athlete. So this increases oxygen carrying capacity and it's due to the blood plasma increase and blood volume increase, as well as a boost in red blood cell numbers. Now this allows greater oxygen levels to be available to muscles and leads to greater endurance performance. Now you can see in this image here that the red blood cell contains hemoglobin, okay, which transports or attaches to the oxygen and carries oxygen uh, throughout the body and to working muscles. Oxygen uptake is the amount of oxygen utilised by working muscles and lung capacity is the capacity of air in the lungs. Now when we think about oxygen uptake, it's also expressed as VO2 max. Now this increases with training and it indicates a superior oxygen delivery system which contributes significantly to outstanding endurance performance. So a trained athlete not only has more hemoglobin in their, in their blood that can actually carry the oxygen but it can also develop the capillary networks in the muscles which allows oxygen to be diffused into the muscles a lot easier and also CO2 or carbon dioxide to be extracted from the muscles and removed. So that delivery system is very efficient and it allows a trained person to use more of the oxygen available and perform better. In terms of lung capacity, lung capacity doesn't change a great deal with training. There are only small changes. However, the strength of the lung muscles and the surrounding tissue uh, change as a result of training and this leads to much better and more efficient breathing or ventilation an increased amount of capillaries uh, inside the lungs and this can increase the volume of air and oxygen absorbed. Now you can see in this graph that the impact of training on oxygen uptake is fairly clear. Oxygen uptake is relatively the same at rest for trained and untrained Athletes, however, you can clearly see that the green line indicates a much faster rise uh, at the beginning of exercise, and this means that an athlete reaches a steady state much quicker. This just means that the athlete is able to utilise a greater amount of oxygen to begin with to help reach that steady state of oxygen supply to the muscles. You can see that the untrained athlete has a far more gradual rise in terms of using oxygen.
Now this is the end of part one of the physiological adaptations presentation. Be sure to tune into part two, which will include muscle hypertrophy and the effect of exercise on fast and slow twitch muscle fibres.